Hey, what's happening? I'm Claudio, and today I'm finally going to be finishing up the bathroom remodel project. I'm going to be putting up the tile and getting the glass door installed. I know it's been a long time coming, but if you want to see how I finished it off, stick around. Let's make it now. Much like many projects, the planning stage is the most important part. I spent quite a bit of time figuring out the best way to lay out these small subway tiles in the space. I grabbed the tape measure and found the center line. Then, using a level, I extended that line all the way to the ground and up to the ceiling. I wanted a full row of tiles to go just below the shower nook, so I measured down using the tiles and 1 8 inch spacers. Doing this would let me know where to start the first row of tiles down below. After making the mark, I used a level again to extend the line all the way around the shower. I cut a few strips of wood for the tiles to sit on and screwed them into the wall right on the line. Although the line is level, I kept checking to make sure the boards were as well. I was now ready to start installing tiles, so I mixed up some more of the same mortar I used for the floor. I started on the middle wall, against the board, right on the center line. I buttered up the first tile with some mortar and smashed it on the wall. After putting on the second tile, I felt like the first one didn't have enough mortar. See how there's still dry spaces after pulling it off? I added more and then smashed it back in place. At this point, it was nothing more than repetition. Butter the tile and smash it on the wall. I did keep stopping to make sure the tile rows were level. I kept all the full tiles in the middle of the wall, and the tiles that I had to cut went in the corners. We used the classic subway pattern. It's just a row on top of another, but shifted over by half a tile. I added a piece of wood screwed to the shower nook to support the tiles above. After double checking it was level, I continued adding tiles all the way up. Not much different on the second wall. I started with a marked line where I wanted the tiles to end and worked my way into the corner. On this last wall, I tiled around the valve and used a diamond tipped hole saw to make the hole for the shower head. The next day, I came back and knocked off all the little tile spacers. These spacers were okay, but next time I'll probably use the little shim ones that allow more fine tuning. I also removed the support boards at the bottom and from the shower nook. I grabbed the hydro barrier and sealed up all the holes from the temporary support boards. Most of the tiles had little mortar smudge marks, so I used a damp rag and a small scraper to clean them, as well as all the joints. The floor tiles needed to be installed before the last row of wall tiles. I laid out the sheets to figure out the best way to install them. I used a utility knife to split the sheets down to make them fit. Once I had the entire space covered, I removed the two sheets right above the drain and added some spacer tiles to bring the sheets flush with the top of the drain. This is the top-down view, showing how I could see the edges of the drain. Using a sharpie, I went around the perimeter of the drain and marked it out on the tiles. I removed the sheets and took them out to the garage. I used a ruler to connect the marks and make nice, straight lines. There were two complete tiles inside the lines, so I just cut them out with a knife. I used a 360 or non-segmented diamond blade on the angle grinder to cut along the lines. This is very delicate work, so I went super slow. I didn't want to get carried away and accidentally chip a tile. Most of these blades can be either used wet or dry, but I thought it'd be easier to just cut this dry. After making sure the tiles fit correctly, I pulled off all the sheets and applied a heavy layer of mortar and then smashed them in place. I continued this for all sheets, as well as all the individual tiles I placed around the perimeter. Once the mortar had time to dry, I could apply the grout. We chose to use a dark gray grout to match the floor tiles in the rest of the bathroom. I mushed it down into all the joints, letting it sit for a few minutes, and then wiped the tiles clean with a sponge and some water. Tiling the shower nook was really no different than the rest. I applied a coat of mortar and then arranged the tiles. The shelf, sides, and top were all the same white subway tile, but the back was the same tile as the floor. I didn't show it here, but I had to cut a ton of tiny little pieces to fill in everything. Once the floor was finished drying, I installed the remaining wall tiles at the very bottom. I cut all the curb pieces out of the same tile as the bathroom floor and installed them in place. The last bit of tile work before grouting was the bull nose on the front edge of the two side walls. The bull nose tile gives the edge a really clean and finished look. I mixed up some grout and spread it around. I let it sit and just like the other times, wiped it clean with a sponge and some water. The curb was the same, except I applied the white grout that I had used on the bathroom floor. My work was done. The very last thing to call the entire project complete was to have a local glass company come and install the glass shower door. These guys were pros and had the entire thing installed in about an hour and a half. 
They make the job seem easy, like they just drill a few holes and screw in the glass panels, but it's all the little details that make the difference. They spent the time to make sure the panels line up correctly. They made sure to seal all the holes with silicone so there wouldn't be any leaks. After cleaning up after themselves, they were gone. This is just a little reminder of what the shower looked like before the remodel. In the end, the shower looks fantastic and we're incredibly happy with the final results. Well, this whole project has been an incredible learning experience for me, and I promise I will get to making videos other than bathroom renovation. This bathroom is done, and I don't plan on doing it again anytime soon. I wanted to make sure that you all know I'm not a professional. I just did my research, I figured out what I wanted to do, and I jumped in and started doing it. I made mistakes along the way, and the finished product does have some flaws, but we love the way that it looks. So I just wanted to say again, thanks for sticking with me through this series. Let me know what you thought about this video or the entire project in general in the comments below. If you liked it, maybe hit that thumbs up button. And if you aren't already, become a subscriber to my YouTube channel so you won't miss any of my future projects. If you want to see what I'm currently up to, you can follow me on social media at Make It Now channel. And if you want to check out all my past projects or maybe download some plans, check out my website at makeitnow.tv. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.